Now we are going to explore infinite limits and their geometric interpretation in terms of asymptotes. We have seen that the limit of a function does not always exist, and the previous video on one-sided limits was illustrating one way the limit of a function may fail to exist. Another way might look like that. This is something we discussed before. Let's say we are looking at the behavior of the function near x equals 0. In other words, we are trying to see if this function has a limit at x equals 0. If I pick a point on the graph and x approaches 0, the corresponding point on the graph has a y value that grows and grows and keeps growing. In other words, uh, the y values of that point are not going to approach any fixed number and therefore the limit of f of x as x is approaching 0, even just from the left, as we have seen in this animation, does not exist. However, we may try to say something about the way it fails to exist, because the behavior here is quite different from the behavior when there is a one-sided limit. In that case, we're going to write that the limit as x is approaching 0 from the left of f of x is positive infinity to indicate that the values of f of x keep growing as x get closer to 0 and x is less than 0. Since we have the same behavior from the right when x is greater than 0, we're going to say that the limit from the right of f of x is also positive infinity, again to indicate how the limit fails to exist, specifically because the values of the function grow without bounds. Because we have this behavior from the left and from the right, symbolically we, we can even write that the limit at 0 of f of x is positive infinity, indicating that from the left or from the right, the values of f of x are going to get bigger and bigger as x gets closer to 0. So this symbol positive infinity indicates that the values of the function grow without bounds, with positive values. It's a way to say how the limit of the function at zero fails to exist. So let's take a look at another example and let's look again at what is happening near zero for this function. Let's say from the left. So we pick an x value on the left of 0 and the corresponding point on the graph of the function and we let x approach 0. The corresponding point on the graph has y values that are smaller and smaller or in other words more and more negative large. Symbolically we're going to describe this behavior by saying that the limit of the function at 0 from the left is negative infinity. So now we have another symbol negative infinity to indicate how this one-sided limit fails to exist, specifically that the function become more and more negative large. Yet you see that for this function, the uh, limit at zero from the right is positive infinity as the values of the function grow larger and larger. So let's turn to more formal definitions of these symbols now. The limit of a function at a is positive infinity if the values f of x can be made as large as we want by taking x sufficiently close to a but not equal to a. So it's very similar to the definition we gave for the regular limit. Now the important part here is that we can make the values f of x as large as we want. What does that mean more formally? As large as we want means that for any positive m we can make f of x larger than this value. We can make f of x larger than any number we fix. And how do we do that? By taking x sufficiently close to a but not equal to a, in other words, by making x within a certain distance of a but not equal to a. Similarly, we can define the limit of f at a to be negative infinity if the values of f of x can be made as negative large as we want by taking x sufficiently close to a but not equal to a. Formally we have a similar situation, the limit is negative infinity at a if for every m 
there is a delta such that when x is within delta of a but not equal to a, f of x is smaller than the opposite of m. In other words, we can make f of x below any large negative number. So as negative large as we want corresponds to making f of x below negative m for any positive m, no matter how large. Now we can give one-sided versions of these definitions. Limit of f at a from the left is positive infinity. If we can make f of x as large as we want by taking x sufficiently close to a, but less than a to make sure that we are looking at what happens from the left. Similarly, we can define the limit of f at a from the right to be positive infinity if we can make f of x as large as we want by taking x sufficiently close to a and greater than a. Just like in the case of one-sided limit in the regular sense, when the one-sided limit is a finite number, we can formally describe this uh, by simply restricting the conditions on the absolute value. Instead of saying the distance between x and a is between 0 and delta, we're just going to take, in this case, x minus a is positive and less than delta. That ensures that x is within delta of a, but the condition x minus a greater than 0 ensures that x is greater than a. This is the case of the limit from the right. Of course, we would have a similar statement for the limit from the left. Now let's look at an example, for instance, of the limit at 2 from the left of 3 over x minus 2. As x is approaching 2, x minus 2 is approaching 0, so we have 3 divided by something getting closer and closer to 0, and these values are going to grow without bounds. They might be growing very large or growing very negative large, depending on the size. In any case, this limit does not exist. However, here we want to specify how it fails to exist, and in other words, we want to specify whether this one-sided limit is positive infinity or negative infinity. To see that, note that when x minus 2 is approaching to 0 and x minus 2 is negative, we can write that as x minus 2 is approaching 0 from the left. Uh, we have that 3 over x minus 2 is negative because 3 is positive and then x minus 2 is negative. In other words, as x is approaching 2 from the left, the expression remains negative and in absolute value grows without bounds because the top is positive and the bottom is negative and therefore the limit of the expression at 2 from the left is negative infinity. Now the geometric interpretation of this kind of situation, as you can tell from the two functions that we looked at at the beginning, is that when we get close to zero, the corresponding part of the graph of the function gets closer and closer to the line x equals zero. We're going to call this behavior, to refer to this behavior by saying that the vertical line x equals zero is an asymptote for the function f. More generally, x equal a, which of course is the equation of a vertical line, is a vertical asymptote for a function f if at least one of the one-sided limits of f at a is infinite, which symbolically we may write this way. This um, formula really should be written as four different formulas, but if any one of these four possibilities is true, then we have a vertical asymptote. In the next video, we are going to look at how we find this vertical asymptote. So I'll see you there.